All right, we are live. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are going to wait for about one minute so that everyone gets a chance to join and uh, we'll we'll kick it off. Okay, I believe we're ready to start. I see it's 10.01 here on the east coast of the U.S. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Vodafone and K2View joint webinar. I would like to introduce you to our presenters, Michael Fuller, Product Manager at Vodafone Germany and the Program Manager Lead for the CDH Project, and Gil Tretino, Director of Project Marketing at K2View. Today's session, a case study of Vodafone's customer data hub, is being recorded and will be made available on the Bright Talk platform after the webinar ends. During our session, we will present three poll questions to which we would love for you to respond. We will share the anonymized statistical results of the polls with our audience. Finally, we will have a Q&A session at the end. So please jot down your questions in the questions box and we will try to attend to as many of these as possible. With that, let's get started and I'll turn it over to you, Gil. Thank you very much, Alisa. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us to, to this case study webinar about the road to successful customer 360 implementation. My name is Gil Trotino. I'm Director of Product Marketing at K2View. Uh, and today we have the rare opportunity to get exposed to a real life customer 360 success story. So delivering with me uh, this web webinar is Michael Wöhler. Michael is the program manager lead at Vodafone Germany and he is the leader of this uh, Vodafone customer data hub initiative. Hi, Michael. Hello. All. Hi. We'll get to you very soon. Uh, but let's have a quick look on our agenda for, uh, for today. We all know that uh, despite of massive efforts and investments that organizations put in their customer 360 programs, delivering a real-time, trusted, complete view of the customer remains still a very challenging goal. So in this webinar, we are going to share a real case study from Vodafone, a world leader service provider which managed to complete their customer 360 journey and get really fantastic business outcomes from this project. And Michael will share with us the rationale and the objectives of the project, as well as the key architectural principles. Michael will also talk about the lessons learned and some of their planned activities further on. But before diving into the Vodafone case study, we will briefly explore what are the main challenges that organizations are facing when they try to accomplish a single view of the customer? And we are also going to share with you how a data product approach can help you to complete your journey and bring you to a successful implementation while still leveraging all your existing investments. As Alisa mentioned during the session, we are going to ask you a couple of questions. Please share with us your feedback when we, you know, we, when we uh, uh, post these uh, poll questions and uh, we will try to secure five to 10 minutes at the end of the session to get your questions. So please, you can already start posting your questions on the Q&A box. So without further ado, uh, let's start. And we are going to start uh, by explaining a little bit about why so much effort is being put by so many organizations to achieve customer 360. The main reason is that B2C as well as B2B organizations 
know that with Customer 360, they can really make their customer interactions more personalized and therefore more profitable. And this is, in many organizations, a strategic initiative that is going to serve multiple business domains in the organization, as you can see here. It starts with customer service that are going to aim to reduce the average handling time and improve the first contact resolution and, in general, improve customer experience. The marketing people are looking for a single customer view so they can enable hyper-personalization so they can really target the right customer with the right offer at the right time. The salespeople would like to maximize the customer wallet share. The customer analytics people would like to get data on, on the customer so they can maximize revenues and reduce operational costs. Compliance people would like to get better compliance and protect the customer data. And the product teams would like to enhance product adoption and profitability. So we have so many interests and so many business domains that are looking to achieve a single view of the customer. However, according to a recent Gartner customer survey, only 14% of business and IT executives said that they already actually achieved a 36 degree, 360 degree uh, of, of uh, uh, the view of the customer. So we will soon explore what are the main challenges, but maybe even more surprising is to see that although, seven, although the, the, the numbers are so low, only 14% have achieved it, 70% of the responders said that they are going and they are aiming to complete this journey. They would like to get the value out of this Customer 360 initiative, and they've invested already so much that they'd like to bring it to completion. So we see organizations are totally committed to it, although it's very challenging for them to get there. And maybe this is a great opportunity to ask you guys uh, and get a little bit of your feedback uh, about your situation. So please let us know. And we have now posted the first question. If you have any Customer 360 initiative in your company, did you achieve it already? Or are you planning to start something? Are you in progress? Or maybe you've started something and already abandoned it and uh, decided to cancel it. So please give us your answer. Where are you in the Customer 360 journey? Let us know. <clears throat> and let us know so you we see that you start posting your answers and that the question is up there and i can see already some of the answers coming in so please um, let us know do you have an initiative where does it stand and what's your plans around it the que the question will keep be active and uh, will continue There are so many challenges in achieving Customer 360. We are going to you know, highlight what we believe are the six top challenges. Data quality is probably the, uh, the biggest challenge. Customer data in organizations today is fragmented across very many hundreds of systems, technologies, and formats. And the challenge is really to unify, clean, and ensure compliance of customer data across so many different data sources. Data integration is another challenge. Data is increasingly distributed and complex, and siloed integration initiatives lead to poor customer experience. How do you integrate this data across all these different technologies, unify it, and deliver it fresh and trusted? Delivering fresh customer data in real time is also very critical, especially if you need to deliver it to operational applications such as your contact center or customer self-service portals, mobile applications and others. So dumping all the information in, into a data lake, which is updated on a weekly or even a daily basis is not going to be good enough, especially for operational workloads. You need fresh real time data on your customers. The fourth challenge is about the fact that so many business domains are looking to get their own view of customer data and it becomes 
very, very challenging to get a consensus across all these business units and business domains about what customer data should look like. And of course, on top of this, you need to support and address the increasing number of data privacy regulations and compliance. And for big organization, you need to provide this 360 degree of the customer by supporting high scale and high speed enterprises and environments. So it's really, really challenging. Let us know now, and this is our second question that you would like to, uh, to post here. What is your main challenge? So we'd like to know what is the main challenge that you see in your organizations in achieving customer 360? Is it the lack of consensus? Is it the quality of data? Maybe data integration, data freshness, or maybe it's something else. So please let us know what's your main challenge out of those options. So from challenges and requirements, let's move now to talk a little bit about a data product platform and a data product approach to customer 360. And K2View, at K2View, we develop and deploy a data product platform that integrates processes and delivers enterprise data in real time or via real time data products. And it make making trusted data accessible at an instant. And we'll see in a minute how we do it. Before we talk about the technology, let's talk a little bit about how we define a data product. So on a high level, a data product makes all the data you have about a certain business entity. In our case, this is the customer. Taking it from all your underlying system, make it instantly accessible to anyone who needs it. And it does mean four things. First, it means that you ingest the data, unify it from all the underlying system, ensure that you have a complete holistic view of the customer. The second pillar is about securing the customer data. Govern it, make sure that you apply to all your policies, ensuring that the data is compliant with all your data privacy regulations. The third requirement is that the data need to be delivered up to date, always fresh to your different consumers. And number four is that it would like the same data to fuel and to support both operational and analytical workloads. All of this needs also to be supporting the data product lifecycle. So just like a software product, also a data product has its own life cycle from data product design, build, test, deploy, monitor, etc. So this is the way we see data products and this is the way we see the data product lifecycle. And the data product can correspond to any business entity. In our case, we talk about a customer, but it can be also a credit card, a claim, a payment, an invoice, a device, depending on your vertical industry, depending on your business needs. And what enables us to create, manage, and deliver these real-time data products is actually our patented technology, which lies at the heart of our platform. And this is the micro database. So let's see, let's see what is the micro database and why does it make this magic happen? So I'm going to use this animated slide to, to share with you uh, our secret sauce. On the left hand side, you see the different data sources that we mentioned from different sorts, different formats and different technologies. On the right hand side, you can see the different data consuming applications, operational as well as analytical. And now let's see how does it go. The data product continuously ingests the data, the customer data from all your data sources, unifies it around a one common data schema, enriches the data, transforms the data as needed, masks it, secures it, encrypts it, and finally compresses the data and put it in high speed storage for real time access. Once it's ready there, already unified, clean, and rich, the data then can be delivered in push mode or in pull mode. 
So it can be pushed to any target application and it can also be exposed and be delivered through APIs and web services in the pool mode by any consuming application. Okay, um, this is the micro database a concept which is behind our data product platform. And why is it so important? What can it deliver that other platforms cannot? First of all, you get common unified customer data schema, which is easily understood because it's a complete schema that can be a common language between business and IT and can be understood by all your data consumers. Second, this is data which can be trusted. It's always complete. By definition, it's clean and compliant. The MicroDB is relatively small in size because we have my one micro database for each and every instance of your customer, right? So it can be accessible in milliseconds. And it means that you can deliver it in real time for operational use cases. Then it's also easy to access and always fresh because we continuously sync the data based on your business needs with the source systems. So you can be assured that the data is always fresh and can be trusted. And it's always secured and governed because data governance is built into it and is part of the process of ingesting and securing the data. And finally, you can decide if the data is virtualized or persistent or both. So you can define up to the field level which attributes of the customer data will be virtualized and which will be persistent. These are some of the key benefits of this micro database technology. Now, let's talk a little bit about the capabilities that the platform delivers on top of this micro database concept. The first one is the ability to get real time data integration. Customer data is integrated across all your data sources. This includes master data, transactional data, interaction data, so all the data can be unified in real time and be delivered later to your data consumers. Hundreds of connectors, out of the box connectors, will connect to all your different data sources, relational databases, non-relational databases, legacy applications, web applications, files, etc., etc. New connectors can also be built and extended based on Java. On top of this, you'll get a code free tools to transform and deliver the data. So we talk about a no code data transformation engine, which enable you to deal with the data, transform, mask, format the data, do whatever you need to process the data that is coming from the different sources. We also have a no code web service generator providing an API to consume the data uh, to all your different consuming applications. And customer data is also accessible via SQL, JMS, CDC, and On top of this, customer data is matched, cleaned, and normalized into a complete golden record in real time. You can also create hierarchies, as we can see here. For example, you can create a banking household that we comprise of few customers in real time and deliver it as one data product. Then, as I mentioned, we have tools for securing the data like data masking, the data tokenization, data quality and compliance is done on the fly to ensure customer data is secured. And you can use role-based access control to ensure that only the right people can have access to the right parts of your customer data. And finally, we talk about an open platform that integrates with your data infrastructure that can be deployed as a data fabric architecture, but also as a distributed or federated data mesh it can be deployed on the cloud, on-prem, or also in hybrid environments. This is a little bit of the background about the technology. I'd like now to get to the 
real interesting story of this webinar. And this is a real case study uh, about a customer data hub implementation, uh, very nice implementation done in Vodafone. And this is a great time to hand it over to you, Michael, and ask you to share with us the CDH story. Thank you, Jill, for the introduction and good morning, good afternoon uh, to everybody. Warm welcome from my side as well. I'm, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Good. So um, maybe once again, for those who joined a little bit later, my name is uh, Michael Föller, Michael Föller, as you like. I'm a product manager of an uh, agile release train at Vodafone Germany. And uh, yeah, in this uh, release train, we build what we call um, the customer data hub based on the K2View platform. And on the next couple of slides, I would like to give you an overview of uh, what that is and the key steps and uh, lessons learned in building a real-time 360 uh, customer view. So let's start with the, with the rationale and the mission. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so today, um, Jill, you mentioned it already, we uh, have the challenge that customer data is uh, fragmented across various data sources uh, scattered in the whole organization. Uh, various systems hold different parts of customer data, for example, for different uh, product lines, mobile contracts, mobile customer in, customer in one system, fixed net customer in another system. And this makes it uh, very difficult to provide a consistent customer experience across um, the different touch points uh, and along um, the customer life cycle. Um, moreover, we, we suffer from delays in providing data updates for use cases that require real-time data like, for example, campaign management. And you will see that I come back to campaign management quite sometimes during my presentation because it's one of my favorite uh, use cases. Um, so our mission uh, is to enable uh, a one truth and data driven 360 uh, degree view on our customer in a customer centric uh, data model. Uh, we want to provide a real time integration layer to accumulate customer information from all relevant source systems and deliver an always on accurate view uh, on, our, on uh, the customer. In the end, we see the customer data hub as an enabler to drive value propositions and many data driven use cases uh, like campaigning, but also like personalization, upsell uh, and cross sell or self care uh, use cases, just to name a few. And our main data product uh, to use the K2 view term again, uh, so to say, is the 360 uh, view on our customer, but also other data products uh, are uh, foreseen are perceivable, but we start with the 360 uh, view on our customer. So how do we get there? Next slide, please. Okay, you can imagine as with any bigger initiative, uh, we ran through a chain of project phases like idea generation and RFQ phase, the definition of uh, architectural guidelines and, and principles uh, before the real project was born. Uh, and then we put quite some effort into the creation of uh, what agile development uh, calls the, the uh, architectural uh, runway. Um, I mean the existing code, the K2View components and the technical infrastructure in the cloud. Uh, to support a continuous flow of artifacts through the delivery pipeline. And um, that enabled us to uh, what I call hit the ground running and deliver the first results uh, quite fast. Uh, we are now in the phase of uh, closing uh, the integration of the core, bill, uh, core billing and CRM systems holding the main uh, customer data, as you can see from the red marker uh, on the road. And we already delivered um, some real-time data feeds to, to the business, although the customer 360 view as such is not 100% complete yet. So here I have to correct you a little bit, uh, Jill. It's uh, a little step uh, still to go. Uh, but that is actually the next um, major milestone to provide the 360 customer data view to the first consuming systems as well. So let's talk a while about um, our architectural uh, principles. 
Yep. Well, as said before, our main data sources currently in scope are the core billing and CRM stacks, uh, maintaining uh, customer and, and product data. And the integration pattern for these sources should allow real-time replication and wherever possible, uh, we use Oracle Golden Gate and uh, Kafka as a real-time uh, data streaming layer. In the end, the value of the data in the, in the customer data hub is to a huge extent uh, driven by its freshness. Yeah? So we aim to be as close as possible to any data update uh, in the source system. Um, as all the data sources come with their own data structure and model, uh, a harmonization into a cross-stack single data model is required to create the uh, customer 360 data product. And we use the Telemanagement Forum, the SIT uh, model for that uh, harmonization. Um, it requires quite some effort to harmonize the data, but in the end, um, this pays off for the consuming uh, systems to get all uh, customer data also cross-stack in the same structure. Uh, and last but not least, um, a layered uh, architecture helps to segregate uh, areas of concern and to provide data feeds from different layers of, of the CDH. Um, and what I mean by that, we can see on the, on the next slide. Um, so what you see here is um, yeah, a quite high level architecture view, but it illustrates uh, the key design principles uh, once again. So uh, coming from the top uh, in the circle, um, the highest layer provides the 360 uh, cross stack customer view. Uh, based on uh, matching algorithms to identify unique individuals or enterprise uh, customers. Um, in, each unique customer is represented by a micro database uh, in Fabric, yeah, as um, Jill explained the construct, uh, construction uh, before. And uh, again, uh, a, a data product could also be in the future a household or even a different view, uh, a product view or whatever. Um, Below that top layer, you see um, that the data is, is still organized in stack-wise pillars. Yeah? So data from a mobile or a fixed net uh, CRM system, but uh, it's already transformed into the target uh, data model, the um, telemanagement forum uh, SIT model uh, that we use. And on the lowest layer, there is the one-to-one -one replication of the source data from each stack that we integrate. Uh, and here the data is still structured according to the data model of the source uh, DB. Yeah, that's why I call it the raw uh, data. Um, beneath the circle, you see the box uh, with the source systems. And uh, in most cases, um, we consume the data. They are using a real-time uh, streaming layer. Uh, but in, in some very rare cases, we also use um, batch data. Uh, from sources with a low change frequency. For example, a product catalog um, with uh, a product reference data, you don't need to uh, integrate uh, in real time uh, to the customer data hub. Um, on the right-hand side, you see some uh, examples for consuming uh, applications or business use cases. Um, those applications have two different options to consume uh, data from, uh, from the CDH. Either they subscribe to a real-time data feed and based on defined business logic that reacts on customer data changes, uh, the CDH sends a trigger uh, to the consuming system. Uh, again, here I, I would like to explain the example of a campaigning platform. Uh, we define a business logic in the CDH that reacts on uh, customer changes, like for example, um, uh, a cancellation of a contract and when we recognize such a cancellation, we send a real-time trigger to the campaigning platform, which can then immediately start a win-back process, a win-back activity. So that is one way uh, to, uh, to integrate with the CDH, uh, a push mechanism. And the other way is a pull mechanism. Uh, an application um, or front-end could consume an API. And uh, this is typically for front ends or applications that do not need a continuous data feed, uh, but a real time snapshot of a specific customer at that point in time. 
Um, our preference is to deliver data from the 360 layer. But as mentioned before, it is also possible to provide APIs or data feeds from uh, lower layers and even stack-wise, which we also uh, do already quite successfully. So what have we learned on our journey? Let's move on to the next slide, please. Well, first I have to say, um, we, we learned a lot and we still do in this project because we are by far not uh, at the end of our journey. Um, and we want to uh, even connect many more uh, data sources, not just the core CRM and, and billing systems. But some of our key learnings so far, I, I put down here. Uh, first of all, I would say um, quality of data is, uh, is quite important. And my recommendation is check the quality of your customer data and if possible, clean and correct the data before you connect the source. Um, otherwise, you will just inherit the legacy quality issues into the K2B platform. We don't correct the data in the CDH um, itself because the data is still mastered uh, in the source system and uh, manipulating data only in, in the customer data hub leads to uh, inconsistencies in the end. Uh, second, uh, don't underestimate the complexity of data modeling and mapping and, and matching. Yeah, it takes at least the same effort um, as connecting the data sources as such. And for this step of um, harmonizing the data and uh, mapping them into the target data model, uh, you have to ensure to get the right data experts uh, on board. I, I would say that your data team uh, is crucial for such a project. Um, use an agile approach to deliver in incremental steps and bring functionality in production early uh, is also one of my learnings because um, you only learn with real data in production. And um, for that, you don't have to wait until your customer 360 product uh, is ready. Yeah, we follow a business demand driven approach, uh, which helped us uh, to build trust in the solution by creating business value almost right from the, from the beginning. So in principle, there are always four steps to consider for each um, data source to be connected. First, clean and correct the data in the source uh, system if possible. Connect and replicate your data source one-to-one uh, -to, -one to establish uh, a real-time rep replication process. Um, analyze and map your data from the source data model to the target data model. And based on the target data model, match the data from the different sources uh, to build the converged 360 view of the customer. Okay, let's talk for a minute about uh, our biggest uh, challenges. Um, next slide, please. Um, well, it was not all shiny and bright in the project so far, and we still have some challenges uh, where we work in a good and cooperative uh, manner um, with k to view to overcome them according to our motto uh, getting it done together. And um, yeah, uh, here I would like to, to mention a few things. First of all, uh, performance. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's all about uh, real time. And performance for us does not only mean low response, uh, response times of APIs, for example, but also the up-to-dateness of information in the CDH. Yeah? And I can only recommend uh, to test and prove the real-time capability of your implementation uh, early on. Otherwise, you have bad surprises uh, later. Yeah? It takes really some time to fine-tune your infrastructure sizing and configuration of your system until you get the data freshness and, and API response times uh, that you expect. Uh, second, data security, data privacy. Um, I mean, usually it goes without saying that uh, security and data privacy is of uh, utmost importance when you deal with customer data, especially when you put all the data in one place. Yeah? But it should be always kept in mind during all design and implementation uh, activities. We had some findings here at the beginning that were fixed uh, by, by K2View Swiftly, but it requires a, a continuous uh, focus. Um, yeah, also one of uh, my um, favorite points is CICD pipeline. Um, 
we develop uh, in an agile way and for us it's very important to have a continuous flow of artifacts to deliver fast um, to production and the well designed and implemented pipeline is the basis uh, for that and for many things here for example proper version management automatic security and code quality testing fast deployment cycles automatic regression testing and and so on and so forth and here we saw uh, some gaps um, in the beginning and we put uh, a lot of focus um, onto it to avoid technical depths in the future and we're still improving uh, the implementation of the CICD pipeline here but it's on, on a really good uh, way. Um, integration of object-oriented uh, source DBs uh, also an important topic. Most of our source systems are relational uh, databases and um, K2View has proven integration patterns out of the box uh, for those that uh, work really well. However, one of our main uh, sources is, is an object-oriented um, database. And the approach for those type of DBs um, is new and not that well proven, I would say. So we did in the beginning uh, a custom uh, implementation here first, which uh, required then quite some uh, refactoring effort to get it right. And now we work jointly on the future proof uh, sustainable uh, solution uh, because object oriented databases will, um, yeah, will be the future and we will see them coming up more and more. Um, and the last point, apply real-time thinking end to end. Well, this point is less related to the K2View product itself but more to the way you introduce something like a customer data hub in your organization. I mean, the CDH is an enabler for front ends, um, customer touch points and business processes. It does not deliver value on its own. Uh, it requires the connecting applications and the world around it to be real time uh, ready as well. And um, we have seen some strange uh, effects when we start to work with real-time data in campaigning for the first time, which we did not see before when campaigning was based on batch uh, exports from, from data warehouse uh, information, because these effects were simply filtered out by the long processing time. And they really popped up first time when we um, uh, fed the campaigning system with real-time uh, data. So my advice is to start thinking in real-time processes end-to-end -end right from the beginning and cover both IT and business domains in this journey to achieve a successful implementation of, uh, of a real-time 360-degree customer. Yeah, so that's it from my side for now. And I guess uh, I hand back to you, Jill. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael, for sharing uh, all of this and for your you know, openness. Um, we'll come back to you very soon because I know already we have some good questions from the audience uh, regarding the uh, Vodafone implementation. But before we get to this, I'd like first to share um, our, you know, the answers that we got from the audience on our two uh, poll questions. So we asked you guys uh, if you have Customer 360 initiatives, where does it stand? So 85% of you responded that you have a customer 360 uh, in process. So you are working to deliver customer 360. This is the vast majority of our audience today. Um, the second question we ask is about challenges. And here, actually, we get uh, quite a balanced response. So uh, the three top challenges are, number one was data integration. 41% of you said data integration is the top challenge. 29% of you said it's quality of data, which is the main challenge. And 25% said, said it's about getting to a consensus about what is 360 degree view of, of a customer. So these were the three uh, key challenges that you guys voted, uh, voted for. So before we go to the Q&A, uh, just a few words about uh, who is uh, K2View. Um, K2View uh, was founded in 2009. Um, we have 200 plus employees and uh, we serve the world's largest high scale massive enterprises uh, with our data product platform. 
Um, uh, as I said, we talk about a platform that can be deployed in a matter of weeks and deliver value quite uh, quickly. Uh, you can see here some of the key use cases uh, which this platform can support. And today we talked mainly about uh, customer 360, but um, the same technology, the same platform, even the same uh, customer data product can also serve other uh, use cases. For example, uh, we can take insights which you generate using any AI or BI uh, on a data lake or any other platform. Uh, insights like customer churn prediction or real-time credit scoring, these insights can be captured by the platform and can be then pushed back to your operational system, what we call operationalized intelligence. Um, so this is also a very powerful uh, use case. Uh, as we said, we can use the customer micro database also to safe, safely secure uh, your uh, customer information, um, including applying data masking and data tokenization capabilities on, on top of this, so to protect your customer personal information. Uh, also, we uh, can use the same data products to help you to migrate your applications. And we, we do help organizations to migrate their applications to the cloud. We can also take the same data products, customer data products, and pipeline the data to any data lake or data, data warehouse for analytical purposes. Again, the same integrated unified data will serve your operational systems and can also serve your data science data scientists and uh, the other uh, un data analysts that would like to generate uh, analytics out of this data. For many organizations, we also use the same data products to de deliver and provision test data um, to their testers. So you can deliver trusted mass secured test data uh, to uh, increase the development life cycle and make it more agile. And finally, we have customers who use the same data products also to develop new applications to use these data products. Uh, so modernize their applications so they can retire legacy applications. So a lot of use cases can be deployed on top of the same platform using the same infrastructure and the same foundation that you built for your customer 360 initiative. Some Samples of uh, uh, use cases you can see here. Um, Cloud-based real-time customer 360 for at and which manages 130 million uh, customers and delivers the uh, custom, unified customer data to the contact centers, the self-service portals, mobile applications, and others, and other consuming applications. You can see here an implementation of data tokenization, um, data tokenization use case, which enables the merchants and chains of global payments to personalize their marketing activities without the need to protect the data because the personal sensitive data is protected within the micro database as a vault and the applications can freely use the data without the need to protect and secure it themselves. Uh, it's a huge uh, cost savings as well as operational efficiency. In the Verizon case study, as you can see here, we take network events and alerts and map them to customer data so we can identify for Verizon impacted customers. And they can engage proactively with these customers and uh, um, solve their issues quicker and make their experience much better. And finally, for American Express, we provision secured and masked test data via self-service tools to hundreds of testers to reduce test data creation time from five days to one hour. These are just a few examples of how we deal with uh, data and how we deliver fresh real-time data uh, across different use cases to some of our key clients. Now, now let's just uh, uh, ask you one final question for, uh, for today. And uh, the third question we'd like to ask you is mainly um, to check if you wish to see a demo, product demo of the uh, K2View data product platform, uh, let us know here and we'll be happy 
uh, to customize a demo for you and to show you how we deliver customer 60 or any other use case that we presented here uh, through using our uh, platform. Feel free to respond to this question right now or to protest later. We get some noises on the line. Mike, I don't think it's from you. But I do get some noises. Now, uh, we have a few, uh, few minutes uh, for addressing some of the questions. We won't be able to address all of them, of course, but we definitely we are going to address all the questions offline via email. Let's pick a few questions uh, right now, and uh, let's see. So, um, yeah, uh, one first question to you, Michael. Um, did you use the platform, um, the KTB platform, also to support other use cases uh, with Vodafone? Uh, yes, we do. We also use um, the, the platform for test data management, TDM, um, for, for test data creation. I mean, for example, um, the creation of synthetic uh, test data or also uh, from real customer data by anonymization or pseudonym uh, pseudonymization. Yeah, that's, that's we do, what we do as well. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, there is a question here. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, are you a CDP CDP solution? So uh, again, by CDP, uh, I guess you you refer to customer uh, customer data product, uh, which is a different market domain. Um, uh, and um, actually, not we are not a CDP solution. CDP normally serves uh, marketing teams, and CDP normally includes tools and activities around marketing segmentation, user journey mapping, campaign management, but they all sit on top of customer data. And what we do is we provide and prepare this customer data for a CDP. So we definitely can integrate to a CDP and to many other uh, uh, solutions and deliver the unified trusted data so that the CDP can generate all these nice segmentations and personalization campaigns um, uh, it's, it's maybe worthwhile to mention that CDP by itself cannot really deliver a full customer 360 by itself. CDP normally focuses on certain scope of data, normally doesn't support transactional data, doesn't support master data. It also lacks data integration capabilities, data quality capabilities. So yes, we can integrate with the CDP and we can deliver uh, the unified data across all your data sources to your CDP uh, system. Uh, let's let's see what other questions did we get here. Um, yeah, complexity for us arises with having to integrate data from legacy solutions and databases such as AS400, IMS, etc. Are such integrations supported out of the box? So yes. We do have uh, connectors also to mainframe and uh, other legacy type of applications such as DB2, IMS, AS400. And we have uh, quite a strong experience working with those legacy systems and uh, ingesting data from these systems. So the answer is definitely, uh, definitely yes. Um, another question to you, Michael. How long did it take you to implement the solution, this CDH at Vodafone? Can you relate to it? Maybe take the first phases or maybe just the scope of the project. Yeah. I mean, as I said, um, we had different phases in the project. The project, the idea generation, the RFQ phase, RFQ, I, I would not count now, but um, I mean, after successful setup of the architectural runway, um, it took us uh, around three months to connect the first major uh, source system. Yeah, and I'm talking about a uh, source system uh, containing millions of customer records and load and process the data into CDH and create the first simple uh, use cases after three months. So I would call it an MVP, a minimal viable product. And of course, we, we had to add other things uh, like data reconciliation processes or monitoring and alarming for operations, but it worked after three months. 
Yeah, after we had the architectural runway set up. Okay, very impressive. Very impressive. Thanks. Um, let's let's see another another uh, question. Uh, can the solution match and dedupe customers as well as generate unique keys for customers that exist on multiple systems? I, I, I guess from the terminology that this question relates to the master data management capabilities and, and the answer is yes, we do uh, have and support master data management capabilities as part of... Uh... Can you hear me, Michael? I can hear you, yes. Okay, I, got, I got a message about the connection, so I was not sure. Uh, yes, we do have MDM capabilities. We do have the ability to uh, define matching matching rules, uh, actually quite comprehensive matching rules, including fuzzy matching and others, uh, so uh, to define this uh, golden record and to make, make, uh, make uh, decisions around it. I, I see... Uh, a related question to talk about the golden record and uh, what happens when uh, there is a mismatch, um, what happens uh, with the content that is ignored and not considered in the golden record, is it stored somewhere uh, to, to be available? So yeah, you can decide what to do uh, in case of a mismatch. So one part of the matching rules would be to uh, decide what to do when there is a mismatch. You can alert people um, you can uh, you can register the, these uh, these records aside. Again, it's up to you, and you have a wide variety of choices regarding the action you would like to take uh, during the uh, matching uh, uh, matching process. I would like to add something here, Jill. I mean, um, it's it's a very good question, and uh, I have to say that uh, currently we are. Uh, here very cautious we are using exact matches only to create the so-called golden record in order to avoid uh, false positive uh, matches yeah uh, we only want to um, match customers from different sources uh, together to one individual or one party as we call it um, when we are 100 percent uh, sure and um, also the question is uh, what is the golden record which sources to trust uh, in case of conflicting content, that is really an important topic where you have to be very careful um, to decide on which attributes you use for matching and uh, what is um, uh, then part of your golden record. Uh, do you take the most recent one or um, the one with uh, the most attributes filled and you, you leave out the ones where attributes are missing and so on and so forth. So that's uh, quite quite important topic. Agreed. Thanks for this, Michael. Um, let's take maybe one or two and then we'll uh, close the session. Uh, do you also provide customer happiness prediction uh, based on real-time technical status of services transactions in the customer 360? If so, how is it exposed to customer-facing processes? Uh, so, so yes, as, as I said, you can enrich the customer data with anything, basically. So if, for example, you'd like to calculate this type of happiness prediction or any 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 score, uh, it's up to you. Uh, we can uh, basically uh, trigger uh, any engine, any any function, any application that will, will calculate it. Uh, this can immediately enrich the customer data and immediately get exposed. So your consuming application, this can be the contact center agent or any other, can get this um, uh, happiness prediction or any other score you can push it to your operational systems so it can immediately affect um, the, the contact center or any other per person who deals with the customer and you can really uh, get it operationalized in real time so it's a great question it's a great uh, uh, use case uh, hopefully i understood the, the question uh, uh, correctly um, maybe one last question uh, to you, Michael, about uh, about the people that deploy the solution within Vodafone. Did you have your own people trained on the platform? Did you uh, need to trust k 2 view people? How did you do it? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it was always our strategy to enable our internal um, DevOps engineers to develop um, the Vodafone specific part of uh, the CDH based on the k 2 view platform. Um, 
we still have k to view architecture experts and developers in, in our release train, but as the number of um, internal developers is growing, we can reduce k to view support uh, gradually, yes. So we train our people to be um, DevOps engineers based on, on the, the k to view solution. I mean, in complex scenarios, we still need the k to view expertise, but most of the use cases we can already pretty much code internally. Um, today yeah yeah okay very nice okay i think we'll uh, we'll end up here and again uh, apologize the, the other questions will be answered uh, via email and we'll get back to you guys we, we can't answer all of them there are pretty uh, many questions here um, thank you very much uh, for your uh, patience for your time uh, michael thank you very much for taking the time and sharing this uh, fascinating uh, uh, success story of the customer data hub and uh, if you have more questions you can reach us and again this is a recorded webinar so feel free to share it with your peers and colleagues and um, once again thank you very much for being here with us thank you bye 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 bye